Hey everyone. Well, Azure Data Factory is a great data integration tool to bring your data in the cloud. There's so many ways to do it, and I've made my shares of mistakes. In today's video, uh, part one, I will share with you my five tips about what, what are the things that I've learned throughout the years with Azure Data Factory. If you're new to my channel, I'm Rhys Ang. I'm a data engineer specializing in Microsoft Azure. If you like videos like this, subscribe and hit that like button. Tip number one, use tumbling trigger for Delta load. If you ever seen or use one of the templates in Azure Data Factory to do Delta load, just go to create pipeline from template. You would see the search Delta here. You see there's one template here called data copy from database. Now this is how I used to do Delta load. Uh, in a nutshell, you need to have a watermark column as a, in a table or file somewhere that you need to keep and maintain. And that watermark column is basically a date or a timestamp that will tell you when is your uh, last copy. In this case, in this template, you have this lookup uh, last watermark column. So it knows when his first task basically to find out when the last copy occurred. And also there's another one here to look out when uh, the, what the end date of the copy uh, will be. Uh, this is probably option. And using these two information, you basically have the, the last watermark as the start date and the current watermark as the end date. And you do the copy with that. And at the end, you have to do a, uh, an update to this watermark, uh, last watermark column. And so I presume this is on SQL database uh, somewhere at a table that captures this information. You have to do this process, which is a bit cumbersome. If you do it with tumbling trigger, it's actually a lot simpler because uh, I have this one activity that copies data from SQL DB into data lake. And let me just show you what it looks like quickly the source is SQL DB I just do a query here select star from this budget budget code table and I, I know there is a column in budget code called thing start date time that I can use as sort of a last modified date time so it tells me when the uh, the record has been inserted into this table so I can do delta load based on that what I have is here is just a two parameters, one start time and the other one is end time. So that I can do a where clause here where the thing start date time is greater than the start time and the thing start time is less than or equal to the end time. Yeah. And if you go, if I show you these parameters, I have these two start and end time. And this file name here, just, uh, yeah. But just focus on the start and end time. Uh, default value here, uh, don't worry about it because this will get replaced. Now, uh, when you do create a tumbling trigger, you click new trigger, create a new one, you name it, you always have to click tumbling window. And you pick the start, oops, you pick the start date and you set the recurrence, whether it's every 15 minutes, every hour, every 24 hours or so, yeah. Now, <clears throat> when you use tumbling trigger, there's these two system variables that is interesting and useful. And if you, I'll share this link later, but there's this window start and window end system variables, which is effectively, it gives you uh, the start and end date that you can use for the delta load. And what that looks like is I've got a trigger already for this pipeline. And when I created this trigger, and when I set the start and end time parameters on this pipeline, I just set this trigger outputs window start time. And this comes from here. and trigger outputs window end time, and it comes from there. As I said, I'll share this in the 
description below. And the beauty is when this is triggered, this pipeline is triggered, I've had one run already, this is that. It gives you this, it will generate you this automatically by the time I trigger. So you don't need to worry about watermarking. You just use this, really. Make your life easier. Just so you know that I've actually created a video talking specifically about ADF tumbling trigger and the link should be up here. And check it out if you want to find out more. Tip number two is tumbling trigger dependencies. Now if you have a pipeline that say copies from source into data lake and you also happen to have another pipeline that copies the same data the same file from data lake into maybe another SQL database or Synapse, uh, you might want to chain them up. So you want to make sure that only when the first pipeline, the first uh, from source to data lake pipeline complete, then the second pipeline is run. There's a way to do that. And if you're using tumbling trigger, you're in luck because you can chain them up pretty quickly and easily. If you look at my uh, pipeline here, I have a trigger, tumbling trigger that is run from 9 a.m. every hour. That's it. And if I want to have another pipeline that is run only after the first pipeline is finished, then I just set a new trigger they call trigger two. If you pick something trigger, and if I pick the same start date, start time, yeah, start date time, 9 a.m. with the same recurrence. You see here, if I click advance at dependency, I can just pick trigger one, and it will just work. Yeah, and if I just click OK and use the same value. Add the add sign. That will just work, and it will chain uh, trigger one, and then with trigger two. So when trigger one is done, trigger two will run uh, right after that because it's chained uh, that way. But that was a simple, very simple example. If I just give you a little twist here, so if I edit the same trigger. But I'm going to change the start date to, let's say, 9.30. You see here, eventually, if you either try to save it or not, you will get this error message saying you need to align the offset for the fancy trigger one. This is because trigger one starts at 9 for every hour. Trigger 2 starts at 9.30. Uh, data factory doesn't like it. You need to set it sort of at the same time and you need to offset that. So what that means is you basically either you just copy this. By the way, this is the first zero is day and then hour, minute, seconds. Yeah. So you put that. So yeah, now it works. So basically it just brings uh, this trigger, second trigger, uh, half an hour, uh, from the, in terms of dependency, is half an hour earlier. So it knows that after the first trigger finish, this will trigger, yeah. Now, the window size is basically, if you want to trigger two, two, two hour uh, trigger one runs, and then this is triggered, you can change that as well. So you can maybe make it, instead of minus, uh, make it, There you go. So you give one hour uh, window size, which is basically gives you or look at two hour uh, window. Uh, there's a, a good documentation on Microsoft talking about this as uh, dependency size. Um, my apologies, it's actually supposed to be two, not one. If you want two hour, two trigger one uh, after that one complete and then this one this trigger gets run 
Tip number three is always parameterize if possible. Now, you've seen this pipeline before and you see I have three parameters, yeah. Uh, and the reason why I have these parameters is, is because it's, it's gonna give, make it simpler and it will reduce duplications of pipelines and activities. Let's say this pipeline needs to be run 100 times because I want to copy data, uh, let's say copy 100 tables uh, into data lake. Uh, you either have to have 100 pipelines like this with different, with if you hard code it directly in the, in the sink here and the source, you have to hard code it or you can parameterize this. Now, at least if you don't parameterize at the pipeline, at least uh, you typically parameterize the data sets. For example, here I have a data set in data lake for CSV file, I have a data lake for Parquet file. And if you see here, I all I have parameterized the, the path. So file system, directory, and file, uh, which is parameterized here. What that means is if you need to make a connection to data lake uh, and looking for some CSV files and you have 50 CSVs, you just have to, you, you can just use this one data set for all those 50 uh, transactions or activities in your pipeline. It makes uh, life a lot simpler. And I believe there's a lot of videos and blogs out there talking about it, but I'd like to emphasize this because I've still, I've still seen some uh, engineers using uh, not using parameter enough because I think this will make it, your data factory pipelines uh, easier to read, more maintainable, uh, and basically more foolproof in the long run. Tip number four is string interpolation in data factory expressions. Now, if you've used parameters before, or you need to change uh, or make your Values dynamic in data factory, you typically use parameters like I mentioned in the previous tip, and you sometimes have to do a bit of uh, magic with the uh, with the strings. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, let's say I have this parameter called file name at the bottom here, and yeah, is this what the the file name of the sync file I want to be? So it's called budget code, yeah. Now, you can do something like this. So you want to drop the file in raw container directory or folder temporary, and you can do use a, you can use concat function and just concatenate that that file name with the extension .csv so that it will copy as a CSV file. This works. I've tried it <laughs> and. But this is not very easy to read, and you probably know a better way to do it. And is this where I'm going to as well? Is is without using the concatenate. And by the way, sometimes you do need the concatenate uh, when you have uh, complicated. So you have many functions uh, used within within this this uh, content dynamic content. Uh, but typically, you don't do that much. Uh, what I mean by that is this. If you go to the other example that I have here, instead of using concat, you can just add curly bracket and you just type in that parameter name and dot CSV. No concat, no function. So this is my recommendation if you use a string uh, combination or merging within a data factory expression. There's a good documentation in Microsoft, which I will also link in the description below. We'll share you some more examples. Tip number five, auto align and zoom to fit. And if you look at this, there are two buttons here on the right hand side called uh, zoom to fit. I believe this one and this one is called auto align. Not sure why this is not coming up. Usually it is. There you go. Zoom to fit. Now, typically, uh, you click this to zoom in to your activities in your pipeline. 
But sometimes, you know, you get lost here uh, in, in, in the white space here. And sometimes you don't know where, how to get to find your pipelines or activities again. And the easy way to, easiest to do it is to click the zoom to fit. So you'll get back to where, where it is. And obviously you can zoom out if you want to, right? Now, there's another one here that's useful and I like it a lot to tidy up your pipeline activities is if you have a lot of activities and you are, they're all messed up uh, in with, with position and you can just click auto align and it will tidy up for you. That's it for today's part one data factory tips video. If you like more, more tips like this, make sure you check out uh, my part two, which is coming up in, in the next week. And yes, if you like videos like this, please press that like button, subscribe for more videos like this. I make videos about data engineering and agile. Peace.